Today topic is about coloring paper during Islamic medieval era, uh, materials and technique. Uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, four subtitles. I start with natural color of paper, uh, reasons of coloring paper in general, uh, historical sources of coloring paper, and by the end, the fourth one is like discussion and results. Please. Uh, before talking about paper dyeing, uh, let us first have a, a look on the big picture uh, and explore the process uh, in total, which is about uh, book manufacturing in general. Uh, and of course, paper dyeing was a part of this uh, process. In Islamic medieval era, uh, the process of uh, book manufacturing started with paper making, then paper coloring, then paper starching, then ink making and writing, and then decoration and painting, and finally, uh, book painting. Uh, classically, each stage of, uh, of the process of book manufacturing has a certain craftsman who were responsible for doing the job. Uh, there were paper makers for paper making, but we don't know actually, actually, who were responsible for paper coloring and paper starching as well. Uh, there were scribes, calligraphers, and copyists for ink making and writing. Uh, there were painters and gilders for decoration and painting. And finally, we have book binders for book binding. Uh, also, before we start about uh, talk uh, about coloring paper, we have to clarify the meaning of Islamic state during medieval time. This map shows uh, the geological and political theater uh, for this state after more than a century of the beginning of Islam spreading and a year uh, before the Muslim knew about uh, paper making. I would like to refer about something. Uh, all these borders uh, were closed for more than uh, uh, 1,000 years. I mean, uh, uh, from the since the Alexander the Great until the 7th century, all of this area were closed. And when the Muslims started to like opening these countries, uh, there is like a big movement, I mean, culturally, politically, uh, and trade. Uh, causing knowledge and uh, transfer a lot of, of, of knowledge. Uh, the paper making has invented uh, around 105 AD in China uh, and it stayed as a Chinese secret for more than 500 years. Then it moved to East via uh, Buddhist monks to Korea and Japan around 600 AD. And from China, it moved to the west into Muslim city, Samarkand, after Chinese paper makers were uh, captured. Uh, actually, it's in uh, here in uh, the city of Samarkand. Uh, uh, in modern times, it's uh, in, uh, in Uzbekistan. Uh, then the craft of paper making spread rapidly through Persia, Baghdad, and Iraq, in, in, in Iraq, Damascus in Syria, into Egypt, then Morocco, uh, and finally uh, to Muslim Spain. It reached Europe uh, in 12th century AD, then it moved from Europe to North America. Uh, Regarding to the previous studies of paper, uh, scholars have more interest for studying arts on paper. 
and calligraphy, uh, calligraphy uh, in history, in historical context of colors and pigments, and is the chemical composition context of this art. While there are less concentration on the study of paper itself as a support material and its colors. Uh, and how we have two examples here of, of, uh, of miniatures or scholars mainly concentrate in uh, studying this kind of, of, of arts. Uh, in Islamic medieval era, the natural color of paper generally was ranging in color from cream to dark cream and either gray or of white in tone according to its uh, production inputs. So I mean, according to the inputs, you have final, uh, you have uh, <coughs> color. If you if, for, if you enter like uh, dark inputs, you will have uh, a dark paper. And the opposite. Uh, this table shows uh, the natural color of undyed paper produced in Persia, Sur Syria, and Egypt over seven centuries from 12th century to 18th century uh, AD. And as we notice here, it's most of papers, dark cream, biscuit, uh, brown. So uh, most of them uh, are this one. Uh, after the production of the sheet of paper and based on historical evidences, uh, it was being technically used in four different ways. Uh, first of all, paper used for writing uh, or for any other applications in its original color. After uh, it has been sized or <coughs> started to make the process of writing uh, more easily. So just if you have a paper, you starch it, using it for, for, for writing. The second one uh, uh, could be dyed with the available dyeing materials in case of not satisfaction of its plain color or the need for obtaining a specific uh, paper's color according to the scribe desire and the purpose that paper was using for. The third one, there was a mixed process that had been practiced where the color had been added to the starch, then the colored starch applied on the paper, so it could be considered as sizing and coloring in one step. And I found this method had been described in a manuscript from 11th century uh, in North Africa, uh, Tunisia particularly. The last method that had been intentionally used as a rough paper for writing to allow the ink to penetrate inside the paper to prevent forgery. This technique had been used during the Ottoman Empire and mainly uh, in the official uh, correspondence. There are many, uh, there were, um, according to their definition, there were many reasons for coloring papers during the Islamic medieval era. Uh, first, it was for artistic reason. For instance, a 14th century calligrapher expressed his pleasure by writing with white ink on red or blue papers. Also, a 16th century poet said also about all colored paper, which is a paper dye with a rose dye extracted from safflower. He said, I had rose all paper in my room reminding me of flowers and and face of my beloved. The second reason for coloring paper during that time, it was for healthy reasons. For instance, a 15th century calligrapher said that writing on a slightly tinted paper is suitable and restful and writing on a white paper strike the eye. And there is some modern researches support this point of view where white light sources produce a glare 
that is uh, uh, is uncomfortable to the human eye. The third reason for crying beaver at the time, it's for symbolic, symbolic reasons. For instance, a full red color was considered as a privilege in official correspondence of persons of high rank. For instance, al Kalkashandi, a 14th century Egyptian scribe mentioned to the official correspondence between the Sultan in Egypt and only his two vice for Kark, a city in Jordan, uh, famous for its castle, and for uh, Syria, with usually <coughs> uh, written on red papers. And that could be explained uh, also as, as, as these two regions mostly were full of tension and conflict between the Mamluk Sultanate of Egypt and Crusaders, which means that everything were coming from this uh, area has a great value. Moreover, uh, blue was considered uh, to be the color of, uh, of mourning, and for a long time in Syria and Egypt, orders getting the death judgment to prisoners were written on a blue paper. And even now in Egypt, I mean in modern time, we have blue or green for birth certificates, we have yellow for death certificate, and red pins are used by directors for signature. And here you are uh, an example of some undyed and dyed papers from 15th century uh, during Mamluk periods uh, in Egypt. Uh, when, I start, when, I, when I start to collect some data about coloring paper in Islamic uh, era, I have found that uh, there is only one treatise that contains technical information regarding to paper dye. Uh, this manuscript is written by a librarian called Sami Nisaburi at the city of Mashhad in 1433 uh, and with the title uh, Disquisition on paper, colors, inks, and pens. And it takes translated to French, uh, French first, and then to English uh, from some uh, copies in the library of Katbakhani in Tehran. The manuscript, the manuscript gives 15 recipe for paper dyeing by using 10 materials. These 10 materials include saffron, henna, uh, mulberry juice, anemone, flowers, indigo, lac, sapon wood, safflower, cinnabar, and verdigris. Uh, and he sometimes mixes two materials together to get more colors. It was so strange that I didn't found any Arabic documents at early point of my research. So I started to search for any data in some Egyptian libraries, mainly the National Archive of Egypt and uh, another library called Al Azhar uh, Library. Uh, I found three manuscripts that have valuable information, information about paper dye. One of them is back to uh, the 11th century. And uh, here I will introduce the most completed one of these three manuscripts. This manuscript is original Arabic manuscript for unknown author, uh, but I called it a softy uh, text. It is the last copy, uh, copyist uh, of the copy that I am using. And with the title, An Essay on Making Inks and Other Materials. And this copy at Egyptian National Archives uh, back to 1851, but its technical information has been estimated between 13th century and 15th century, according to the style of writing and the language that had been used. Uh, the manuscript gives uh, 15 recipes for dyeing paper from 
14 materials. This manuscript is not published uh, before either in Arabic or in English. According to the topic of the text that the manuscript dealing with, there is an introduction in the first page explains the topics and the contents of the manuscript. In this introduction, the topics has been divided in seven chapters. The first is about excellence of, of, uh, of the science of writing uh, and the selection of pens and their sharpening. The second is about dissolving uh, the Arabic gum. The third is about making black inks. The fourth chapter is about making colored inks. The fifth chapter is about wonderful types of paper dyes. <coughs> the sixth chap chapter is about paper sizing and gold dissolving. The last one, the seventh chapter, uh, is about benefits of some arts linked to writing. Uh, the fifth chapter, which is about paper dyeing, contains 15 recipes for dyeing papers by using 14, 14 blanks and materials. According to their mention order by the manuscript author, henna, uh, two recipes, uh, marital, well, turmeric, white straw, garlic beans, green fenugreek, red onion skins, lac, uh, Sapan wood, cinnabar, verdigris, the ring of uh, pomegranate, and finally the flower. And all these recipes translated for the first time uh, to English literature. This table shows uh, the comparison between the two manuscripts. The, the Persian one, which is called the Samin Saburi text, and the Arabic one which I found in the uh, National Archive of Egypt and one of them has used 10 materials and the other one used 14 materials but we have the same number of, of, uh, of recipes. Uh, in this presentation I will introduce two examples of the Arabic recipes for coloring papers. Uh, first is henna which has been described as half pound of sift uh, hijazi henna is mixed into hot or cold water uh, when the henna becomes duff like then it is put in a container of copper and again uh, 12 pounds water from a wheel is poured over it the henna is then covered and left overnight Later on, it is filtered with a thin piece uh, of cloth without steering it. Uh, it means a colored water. The second example is well, uh, where uh, yellow lemon dye of well is prepar uh, prepared by taking one pound of seasonal uh, newly collected well washed and put in a container of copper with one ounce of wild natron. Uh, wild natron is like uh, a mixed salt. It's like uh, calcium carbonate, sodium chloride, uh, and uh, usually they extract it from a specific area in Egypt, about 30 kilometers north of Cairo. It's called Natron Valley where we, they could found the salt uh, naturally and they collected it from there. Then 24 pounds of water of the wheel is poured over it and kept overnight. Later on, it is boiled until it is completely diffused into the water. Once heating is stopped, it is filtered, uh, participated, and then it used for dyeing uh, the paper. It gives a vegetable-like color uh, to the paper. Uh, based on uh, 
both historical and investigational studies. Uh, there is no uh, record of color being added to the bulb in the initial stage of paper making manufacturing process. The materials, I mean, the only, I mean, till now, I mean, we don't know if they added another materials or not, but till now, the materials that only had been added to the bulb in Islamic era was wheat starch. And mainly to work as a filler, to bond the paper fibers. Uh, in addition, adding the starch cause increasing of the whiteness of the paper. And this subsequently leads to increase its price as the more white is the paper, the higher is its price. Uh, in, in contrast, most of European colored paper had been made by dyeing the bulb and the fibers before the formation of, of uh, paper sheets as part of the manufacturing process in order to obtain more intense color. So, I mean, in Europe, they, they add the color during like, uh, mixing the bulb or beating the bulb itself. Uh, the COVID original manuscript claims that many plants and materials have been used to dye paper and gives interesting information in the form of 15 recipes for preparing these materials. Although the text of the studied manuscript is a copy from uh, 1851, <coughs> the original may be uh, date back to earlier than the 15th century AD. And this assumption is supported by, uh, number one, it's a style of writing. Uh, the Arabic terms and the technical information uh, which used in the manuscript. Uh, moreover, it is to some extent similar to the manuscript that written by the Persian librarian in 1433. Uh, the process of dyeing had been done by the scribes or the bookbinders, not the, uh, the paper makers. And there is no evidence that this process practiced in paper mills. All materials that had been used were soaked, boiled, uh, filtered, participated, and then uh, the, uh, the resultant colored water used uh, as dyeing path. Uh, each material has its boiling and soaking time and it is different from uh, the other materials. Uh, two types of water had been intentionally used uh, to extract the dyes from its raw materials. Uh, fresh water was only for uh, the flower. The water of wheel uh, with the rest of uh, the materials. Uh, the dissolved salts in the water of wheel uh, have been employed as a mordant. Uh, mordant is it's like uh, it makes a link between the dye and the fibers because it's, it's sometimes difficult for fibers to accept colors. And you, you could notice that with like uh, with the jeans uh, and the cotton as well. It is not easy to accept uh, color. So they prefer to add like uh, mineral, like alum, uh, calcium carbonate, calcium chloride, to to act as a link between the dyes, natural material, and the fiber itself, and bond them together. Uh, Employ it as mordants to obtain more intense color from the dyes. Uh, TDS, I, I mean, I compare between the, the salts in the River Nile, which is uh, an example for fresh water, and the ground water, which is uh, an example for uh, water of wheel. So there is a big difference between uh, the quantity of, uh, of dissolved salts uh, between the two samples. Uh, 
Dying process was done by dipping, dipping uh, the paper sheet directly into the dye bath. This process could be concluded as follow. Uh, extract the dye from its raw materials. Uh, pour the dye solution into a large flat dish. Tip the paper in it. Let the paper remain in the dye so the color uh, affects uh, equally all parts of the paper. Hang a piece of uh, muslin uh, on a line. Wrap the paper over the muslin. Let it uh, to dry. Thank you for your listening. <coughs> Thank you. Fascinating. Um, I mean, I suppose the first question is, um, do you have any, for, for the future, do you have any examples of some of these papers? Because uh, they sound so beautiful, don't they? Yeah. Uh, do you mean the original one? No. It, it, <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's, are they still dying paper in this way sometimes in, in this, this region? No, no, we, we don't have Islamic paper, I mean, in, specifically in Egypt from like the first part of 17th century. Mm -hmm. So this like craft mm -hmm. completely. completely ended in Egypt mm -hmm. uh, after 16th century. Mm -hmm. So this is very specific to that period? To that specific period of time, yes. yeah. I mean, not only Egypt, I mean, even all North Africa, mm -hmm. uh, Syria, Iraq, uh, all Arab Arab countries, mm -hmm. uh, even in Persia, till now we don't have any uh, manufacturing for Islamic paper. So, uh, and I had a plan for future to revive the. But that's I mean that's what I'm sort of thinking. Yeah, yeah. Or even I, I know in in, in India, it, it it appears that the only place that they're still really you know making the the, the paper in similar ways to papers that we're using for Indian miniatures that yeah. are done around the side of Jaipur yeah. area yeah. where they're, I think it's a very sort of thin layers of paper and then burnishing the paper, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it, but it's a very particular process and it would just remind me of the, the dyeing of the dipping the paper into dyes of mm. um, again sort of either reviving or, or, or trying to sort of hang on to mm. some of these very traditional uh, methods and processes. When one time, when I did a kind of tour of, of, of Japan, looking at some meeting some of the very elderly yeah. paper makers, they were they were dyeing the indigo paper mm. in this way. It, it was extraordinary. You have a kind of almost like a kind of slit in the floor, yeah. and then lower the paper into the indigo vat, mm. and then bring it out. And the first one, it was by an elderly woman who was like. I think she was about 83. Yeah, yeah. Pulled the paper out and mm. it was like a kind of pale citrus lemon kind of yeah. colour. And then, you know, it, it, it kind of oxidises and then turned to sort of a turquoise -y yeah, yeah, turquoise -y. yeah. Then again, and again. she put it in mm. for, for, it was, a, I would have requested this particular paper. She dyed it nine times. Uh, so it's over it over dying. Over done, and, Over again, done. and again nine times, and then the last one came up, and it's this um, mm. amazing sort of intense blue that it it, it turned to, and then drying it has this, which which I don't th I, I don't think the the, the the value, but I really like that this kind of bloom of indigo, so it has this slight yeah, yeah. shimmer of, yeah. of of a kind of iridescent yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, sort of yeah mauve or against the indigo, but. Um, but no, I was interested to, to to know whether some of these these sort of dying techniques were being yeah, yeah, yeah. were being revived. We hope. I mean, yeah. I mean, we have another. I have another plan also for uh, uh, so for uh, for specifically coloring paper because, for example, I mean, it's like a trip. Uh, we have colored paper in India, mm -hmm. in Islamic countries. We have colored paper in China, Korea, and Japan, and, and Europe. Mm. So I mean, if you, if you could like uh, mapping this process in total, mm. like, and, and, and it could be like a good project. Yes. If, you, if you could like, yes, yeah. could establish or write a book, write a book about coloring paper in general, mm. Mm. like from China uh, 
to the uh, Muslim countries, to Europe. And I mean, I, and I spoke with, with Jane about yeah, this. She, 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 could, she, she could write, for example, she could write uh, the Korean one, mm -hmm. and she could write uh, the European paper. I could write uh, the Islamic paper. Mm -hmm. We could fi fi uh, find someone could write uh, about the Chinese paper to like to map to to, to, to identify all materials that had been uh, I mean used uh, across I mean across all uh, like the Silk Road here. I mean because it's well looking at those dyes from my sort of fairly yeah. limited experience of. of yeah understanding of, of Japanese and, and um, ja dyeing of Japanese paper that they've you know those are very similar in the safflower and the, you know some of those um, plants are yeah. used in a, a range of those we yeah, yeah. a range of yeah, yeah. countries yeah, yeah. Um, so it would be interesting to, to sort of like you say to, to find the map. connection yeah to map and which place I mean this specific dye had been used and it moved from place to another place in, in which direction. So it's like, uh, it's about, it's a story. Mm. Yeah, telling it's about this. trade, often it's about trade. trade it's well. a trade, yeah, yeah. And also in the botany, probably. Yeah, botany, for example, yeah, that's yes. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Because the plants, yeah. I'm sorry, because um, I'm Japanese, then I have some knowledge about Japanese paper. They compare mm. to European paper. I'm not sure about Arabic things, but mm. I think Japanese paper is much stronger than European mm. one. Yeah. So I wonder, as, What's the difference between strong and weaker papers as uh, behavior for the dye? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, ne next week I'm going to, to give another talk about some materials had been used intentionally during the process of making paper itself to make the paper durable mm. uh, against like insect attack mm. or fungi attack or bacteria attack. Mm -hmm. So uh, the idea of like prevent preventive uh, methods to protect your paper mm. uh, or, or conservation is not a modern idea. I mean, it, it is, has been established uh, since like medieval times or during making the paper itself. Uh, it is quite interesting here. I mean, uh, I told you about opening the borders and it, 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 these borders uh, was closed, were closed for more than uh, 1,000 from the Alexander the Great. There is a scholar said that, I mean, uh, if you have like a, an invention here in the uh, border of China, it, it could take a year to arrive Cordoba in, in Spain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, of course, I mean, uh, the border opened, there is a, a massive life uh, movement, trade, uh, caravans. Uh, so people are, were like moving from place to another place. It is not just like they are well holding uh, knowledge and, uh, mm -hmm. and and the science as well, mm -hmm. beside uh, the goods that uh, they're going to sell. Mm -hmm. You talked about the translation from the uh, about the recipes into English. At yeah. What, at what point was that translated? Then? Because we don't have. Uh, I mean, I mean, could you imagine about all this area? We have just one text from, from Iran. Mm -hmm. We don't have any text explain uh, um, I mean, the methods of dyeing paper from all these countries. Um, yeah. Is yeah. that because the culture was that the knowledge was handed down and passed on through word of mouth and there wasn't seemed to be, you know, a need to kind of write, write mm -hmm. it? It's something that you was was the skills of dyeing the paper was were they kind of handed down in a kind of a, an apprentice kind of way. yeah yeah so we, we have no information at all about it this is I mean uh, to be honest the first text uh, about about this issue about Islamic uh, coloring paper in, in, in general. So I mean. Uh, so like Ginny says, because it was it was passed by word of mouth. You think? Or mm. you have, do you have a theory about yeah, why? Yeah, why? I'm just wondering about the cultural mm. conditions. Why is there so little information? Knowledge. <coughs> because the, the craft itself, except, uh, we have no craft na nowadays. Okay. 
it was before like uh, three centuries before four centuries before but how now we have we have no we have no crafts so we we lost the knowledge oh, okay. we lost the techniques okay. the only way to to get the technique back and the knowledge back mm -hmm. I think it's through going to the the manuscript mm -hmm. and find mm -hmm. uh, any texts mm -hmm. that described uh, this kind of knowledge and information yeah mm -hmm. I, I mean even even we don't have like an oral history for uh, yeah uh, because it's, uh, uh, mostly the European people was responsible for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because what? This is what I'm trying to. No, because what? Because since the Europe, they are so clever. Uh, <laughs> since the, uh, he, he, this is true, mm. they know how to 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 produce a paper in a in a massive okay. massive production of, of of that, and very cheap by comparing to the the handmade one in, in North Africa. Mm. So the people left the craft itself uh, after the 16th, 16th century, and uh, uh, most of paper uh, paper were used in this area. Uh, where uh, was came from Italy, uh, from uh, I mean Venice or mm -hmm. some European countries, Spain. I mean, I think that with, with a lot of countries, that there seems to be historically been a situation where mm. where the skills have been protected as yeah. well. Yeah. That they didn't want to share that knowledge yeah. because they wanted to kind of, yeah. you know, and and even even today, you know, when I when I did that that that, that trip um, around Japan, there were certain paper makers who didn't want me to photograph. Mm. Mm -hmm. very specific. I'm thinking about um, Shibugami. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're very secretive about mm -hmm. Shibugami, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a, a kind of, it, it's made up of very thin layers mm -hmm. of, um, of what's uh, usually a Minogami, which is a very thin translucent paper made up of layers, but then it's, it's a kind of, almost like a veneer of paper. So you might have three sheets together, yeah, yeah. and then it's, uh, it's like a persimmon tannin, which is applied and then traditionally would be smoked for mm -hmm. a week, yeah. a week. So you could you could find the stents and use and then it waterproofs the paper basically. Mm -hmm. So use for kimono stencils and uh, mm -hmm. umbrellas. Yeah, yeah. And you can find the old stencils and you can buy the paper. But to try to get inside the workshop, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's very hard. Very hard. Yeah, yeah very yeah, hard. Yeah. I got yeah. kind of close. I got sort of the. the Courtyard. Mm. <laughs> Took some photographs, but, uh, but it, it's. I, I think it is about protecting and protecting things so they don't also don't become um, maybe too commercialized. Or mm. so I think there's a lot of kind of nuances why people mm. might want to protect those kind of skills. Yeah. yeah. Do people have said any other thoughts about this and sort of anything that you've seen or images or some other thoughts that you've seen? I thought it was really interesting about the enjoyment of using a certain type of paper and particularly the non-glare to not have a piece of paper that was so bright that there was a kind of a restfulness and mm, enjoyment yeah, to using it's it. Interesting, it? I think really interesting and maybe links in with these almost ritualistic mm. ways of not only crafting the paper but then mm ties into how it's it's used. Mm. Mm. You mean the colours for certain occasions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. I thought that was really that mm. completely new mm. thing to me. I'm not a paper expert. Yeah, it's quite interesting as well. Uh, uh, I, did, uh, I found also a lot of like stuff about paper starching itself. Mm. There is a lot of techniques, mm. Mm. and it has been published before. A lot of techniques I found. Uh, uh, in about three manuscripts describe uh, the materials and the methods that have been used for uh, for starching. So uh, are you translating some of the, these manuscripts then as part of your research? Yeah. yeah. This is your research, yeah. the translation of the it, uh, manuscripts? It's a, it's a, it's a the historical part of, of the story itself. Right. Mm -hmm. The second part is like uh, uh, examine some like uh, original samples mm. 
and I found wealth in, uh, and also I'm, I'm, I'm looking for using a specific dyes in a specific place like they use uh, uh, yellow dye uh, in the end papers I mean the first page and the last page it's also for the the theory of protection uh, books from like uh, insect attack or so this, and the third part is like uh, testing some dyes against uh, some specific bacteria uh, in the lab. And the manuscripts, sorry, did you, I didn't catch where the, the manuscripts are held. Are those in yeah. Egypt, the, the manuscripts? Yeah, in Egypt, in Egypt, yeah. in Egypt yes. Uh, I, I, uh, also, uh, one, uh, I couldn't introduce here the manuscript from 11th century. Because I, uh, regarding to the terminology, I couldn't uh, understand <coughs> some specific plants mm -hmm. because the name changed at, at all. Mm -hmm. So there is a name, but I don't know some names. I don't know what is in Arabic, but I don't know what is what is this plant about. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm now working in the 11th century uh, manuscript recipes, try to identify uh, some of these plants mm -hmm. and, and materials. Uh, also quite interesting uh, about, I found, for example, uh, 11 methods for dissol dissolving lac itself. Hmm. So it's, it also it has to be like revealed or, hmm. or published. Uh, there is like uh, a big mistakes. It's a it's uh, s some people, uh, the people who translated from uh, Porter uh, in 1985 uh, and in 1990, they translated this plant as uh, Brazil wood, which is not true. Brazil wood, uh, it has been uh, known since they discovered America. So in uh, 1495, while the manuscript is a Persian one. It's been written in 1433. And the, the same plant, ha, uh, both plants have the same name in Arabic. Mm -hmm. But Brazil wood uh, become well known after nine, uh, 1495. Before that date, we don't have uh, uh, Brazil wood. Mm -hmm. So it's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Some other questions. Yeah. I have one thing. Because yes. I noticed um, in the paper studies field, so I wasn't sure of, uh, what the TDS means because you were talking about ah. yes, PPM things, but I couldn't get what you were talking about, about exactly which kind TDS of... TDS is, is total dissolved solids or yes. salts. So which kind of instrument do you use for the analysis? It's, uh, I give the samples to someone in the chemistry, mm -hmm. and he give me the results. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, have you noticed the big, uh, the big difference between the two numbers? Yeah. It's like uh, nine times uh, salt is uh, uh, compared between the groundwater, uh, groundwater uh, sample. It's a uh, part per million. It's a big, big difference. So it seems, I mean, he is aware and has the knowledge about using mm -hmm. the salty water. Yeah, I, I'm from a uh, chemist as, world, so uh, yeah, yeah. I just wonder which kind of elements in there, I mean, um, uh, know, elements. For example, elements, Element. yes, elements in much, pro for example, you know, calcium is much more in um, river nice water or yeah. such kind of information. I have the all details about it. Mm -hmm. We have calcium, mm -hmm. we have magnesium. Yeah, magnesium because of, uh, I had a talk with, with the guy, uh, he saw uh, there is like, it's maybe come from dolomite. Mm. Do you know limestone itself, it's like, uh, it's cal calcium carbonate, yes. but sometimes it's it replaced with, with magnesium. So it's maybe because of, uh, uh, because of dolomite we have magnesium, we have uh, chlorine because of, uh, calcium chloride, mm -hmm. so we have chloride as well. 
uh, we, uh, he gave me a list of all minerals that he found. Uh, what I'm trying now is like uh, dyeing uh, some samples with fresh water and dyeing another samples with, uh, with ground water uh, sample and see the difference between the two colors. I mean, I will use the same plant, the same dye, but with, with two different types of, uh, of water. Yeah. When you're dyeing fabric, you use salt to um, set the dye to make it more permanent. So do you think it is more permanent using the groundwater? It, it gives you a lot uh, more intense. Mm. I mean, uh, the more salts you have in, in, in the water, mm. the more tense you have in, 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 in color. color. I mean, if you and if you use different type of, of minerals, for example, alum or calcium chloride, you will give like a different uh, tones of color, maybe dark uh, or a different colors. What do you use for fresh water? Mm. What water? Do you mix it? The river, new water, or what? Uh, what kind of water do you, do you mix the water and the fresh water because you can't take tap water or distilled water for it? It's a fresh water here, it's from the Nile itself directly. Well, when you um, do your experiments, yeah. what kind of water do you use then? I'm using tap water. Tap water? Tap water, yeah. But there's a lot of chlorine in there and stuff like that. So it's yeah. Totally different. Totally yeah. different. Yeah. Totally different, yeah. So maybe I, I use it with, ta with tap water and with a distilled one. Still water is also different. Yeah. Yeah. But would be maybe an idea to mix um, water because we have also artificial dirt when you do when you you know test the painting you dirt the painting. Yeah. And they have like artificial dirt which is really you know you know what's in there and yeah. it's made. Yeah. It's not just dirt. It's really mm. what's called a standardized. Yeah. Standardized dirt. So so what do you recommend like for it? I think. Yeah, we should have a look what 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 is really in this water in this yeah. river meal water and then yeah. mix it. Ah. Get like a standardized. A standard, water. yeah. Mm. Otherwise, you get not really good results because yeah. the tap water in England is so different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, I like to mention about the river Nile water as well yeah. because you you were talking about you know twelfth century or four, uh, 14th century things, not mm. current river Nile water. Yeah. So. Maybe you need to imagine, you know, what kind of pollution you have currently. Ah, yeah. Usually, the samples we take is from from uh, from the south of Egypt. We have polluted water in the north, but in the south, it's very pure, pure water. And the guy who was uh, he did the samples for me. He told me that you could drink uh, directly from the from the Nile, and it's very safe. There is no problem. So you did do some experiments using river Nile water? Yeah. No, no, I, uh, I, uh, I took samples. Sam samples, samples, yes. samples yeah. yeah. To, 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 to see the difference, why, why he mentioned exactly to yeah, use, yeah, yeah. with a specific dye, he mentioned to use uh, the fresh water. <coughs> and with other dyes, he mentioned to using like uh, the water of wheel. So, I mean, he, 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 mm. he mentioned to that intentionally. Mm. I mean, he have the both of them. And in this position, he said that we have to use fresh water, and with this plant and dyes, we have to use this specific. Yeah. So I mean, he has the knowledge yeah. about using a specific type of of, uh, of water. Yeah. And uh, I, I just remember about real water yeah. because um, as it's not for the paperwork. It was a semiconductor thing. One um, company used well water for cleaning their uh, products, mm -hmm. but they got a problem. Yeah. Then I, when I analyze it. I saw some bacteria there. Bacteria. So I'm not sure if it works for paper, but maybe bacteria mm. use a, a, another intense color for the paper or ah, something. That's quite interesting. Mm. So could you think bacteria as well? Maybe yes. Could give a different. But it depends how they treated the water. If mm. you know they you know uh, boiled it to 100 or something, it's like all bacteria is gone. Yeah. But yes. Mm. Just keep in a, some bottle for one week or something. Yeah. You may have a lot of bacteria in there as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the recipe, he usually like uh, boil the, the plant itself uh, for some times, but he didn't mention uh, how long exactly. 
uh, and live it like until like to become a little bit cold and uh, participate it and then use it for as a dice a paper with it later on and use also another technique like soaking the plants for like two nights it's it's also quite interesting like in a specific plant said for example uh, so soak it for two nights and with another plant uh, I mean mentioned to soaking it for like one night so different time of, of, of soaking and different time of boiling uh, and sometimes they use like the cold water without uh, uh, boiling uh, or soaking so it's quite interesting I mean but you're experimenting with some of these plants then. yeah yeah. Now and you have this. You have those samples. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You have the samples. This is what would be also lovely yeah. to see. Could we? Could we see them at some point? Last uh, next week. Yeah. Uh, next week. But it's just like a small pieces. It's okay. Of, yeah, I think it would be paper. really nice to see. Yeah. A small pieces of paper. You know, it's like it's okay. to see uh, what color yeah. could I get from from this recipe. Mm -hmm. But I'm concentrating mainly about uh, the yellow dyes mm -hmm. because it's what I found. In I've got like sample samples from uh, from 13th century manuscript. It's the original one. Uh, it's dyed with, with yellow dye, and I found the uh, wheel had been used in this in this manuscript. So uh, and also uh, a lot of yellow dyes had been used in China, and we don't know exactly where this idea came from. Is it came from China to Egypt, or I, the opposite? We don't know. Uh, <laughs> when exactly came, uh, yeah. if it came from China to Egypt, when exactly uh, did it came? So it's like a lot of questions we don't have an answer for, for it. Very yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Can I also ask you, you talking about putting calcium carbonate in the paper and, yeah. it, and, and then to rinse it, make sure it's rinsed mm -hmm. um, for longevity. Do you have to do that then if you're using the salty water? Mm. No, do you have to rinse it? No. But then usually, I think you use for the models, these are yeah. salts of metals. Mm. Mm. Yes. So I, I haven't used calcium carbonate for dyeing. Mm. I use like iron or salts of iron. I was just thinking if, if it was in this um, river Nile, which has got such a high mm -hmm. concentrated salt level, whether the paper would disintegrate quicker, um, you know, could be. Yeah. Mm. Have you used calcium carbonate? Was, uh, I use uh, calcium carbonate for cooking the, the plants for paper making. Yeah, yeah. Th this is the way it also had been traditionally used. Yeah. yeah. They're using uh, lime water, mm -hmm. like to like to uh, to wash yeah. and uh, and the more alkali you add alkali you add to the paper itself the more it's become durable yeah. so uh, for example adding calcium carbonate to the paper using lime water it's make paper more durable okay. uh, also using gelatin uh, as a sizing material it, it is also it has been proved that the more gelatin you add to the paper, the more durable paper that you have. 